What's up everybody? We're back at the car lot today. In this video we're talking about three cars we had to repo. We repo two in one week and then the next week we had to repo another one. The, the third one that we repoed had some problems so we sent it out to the mechanic and that vehicle has just been fixed. We're going to take a look at that and show you the repo that I've got. I'm going to tell you what I made on these three cars that I repoed what I made when I sold them for the second time and then what it cost me to fix the third repo that we got and then this vehicle right behind us hasn't been on the channel yet but that's a a 2002 I believe Ford Explorer it's got a radiator leak on it so we're taking it to the mechanic to drop off and we're gonna grab the car that we have repoed and bring it back to the car lot and that's what you're gonna see on this video picking up the repo, taking this one to the mechanic, and then we're gonna talk about them repos, what profit we made, and what we're doing with them, if we're gonna put them back on buy here, pay here, if we're gonna sell them for cash the second time around. That's what you're gonna learn on this video. Let's get to it. All right, this is the Ford Explorer that we've got. I'll show you a look at that real quick. We're charging up the battery on it because it was completely dead. And then let me show you the inside of it. So you've got a pretty decent looking Ford Explorer here, missing the piece back there. A little rip on the headliner, not nothing big though. And then you've got 197,340 miles on this one. So real quick, the story on this one right here, it's got a radiator leak on it, so it leaks pretty bad out of it, so it tries to overheat and it doesn't have heat right now it's not putting out any heat at all it's just cold air that it puts out so i'm pretty sure that is to do with the radiator leak on it i don't think it can warm up with the antifreeze because it doesn't have enough left in it by the time it leaks it all out so we're taking this down to the mechanic we're gonna have it looked at to have him to tell us what's wrong with it and everything and then we're gonna grab that repo that's down there that's already been fixed so we're um charging this battery right now because the battery is completely dead and sorry about this thing the it was locked up battery died on it so i couldn't use the clicker like i normally did to unlock the door so i tried to unlock it with the key the key does not fit the doors on this thing the key will not unlock it i spent two hours uh, messing with this thing to unlock it with the slim jim thing i had to go buy buy a whole kit and everything just to unlock this vehicle so make sure when you buy these cars you try the door lock with the key before you lock the doors on it because this is about the third one i've had so far that the key does not fit the doors but usually usually i check it i guess i didn't because i was using the clicker so i didn't even think about checking the the key but when the battery dies your clicker don't work no more so make sure you're checking these keys all right so let's see if this battery is good enough to start this thing up yet all right it's been a little while here so let's go ahead and give this thing a shot to see if she's got it there she is oh yeah all right vehicle's running so we're gonna lock this lock up the car a lot and we gotta run down there and take the vehicle down there and switch it with the repo all right take an extra battery and tools in case this thing dies and won't start back with that battery i moved this one over and parked it so we can take off and go i've been driving that one a lot i still got this mustang over here i've got that escape that i'm going to be selling all right let's get this thing and take off all right she's running so we got to go on this thing before it tries to overheat or anything like that because it does try to overheat with that antifreeze leak so we got to just get it down there and and park it up and grab this repo and then we'll be back but this thing does drive really good like it has no problems other than just the oil leak so this thing drives really good so i have I was trying to decide do I, do I just want to sell it because stuff's expensive at the auction right now and let them buy it for a more expensive price or do I just want to fix it for maybe I'm thinking around 200 to fix this thing if it needs a water pump so about 100 for the water pump 100 for him to put it on so do I just fix it for 200 
or do I sell it? But vehicles are really hard to get right now because they're selling for so expensive. So I've, I decided that I'm just gonna fix this one and then I'm gonna put it up for um, probably 600 down or 700 down and just have it as a finance vehicle to, because I'm trying to build I'm trying to build my buy here pay here payments up but I'm also trying to make sure I do enough cash sales with it so that I don't go broke because I don't have a really big bank account so I've got to do some cash some buy here pay here and build both of them at the same time you know what I mean so that I don't run out of money but I want a lot of people on payments so to eventually that's actually something that's being built instead of just having to do cash every month and starting all over again so that's my idea on that I'm gonna fix this thing and as long as it's not too expensive I'm gonna fix it and get this thing out on payments because um, a vehicle like this I'll do at least 1800 on payments and they'll do six down and 130 every other week but you can comment down below if you want to know more about buy here pay here I'll break it down a little bit more for you but for now Let's get this thing down there to the mechanic where um, it's not too far of a drive, so we'll pick back up when we get there. Here's a quick look at it. All right, that was a little look at it. This is the repo car. We got it now from the mechanic. We're gonna drive it a little bit and see how it does, if it tries to overheat or not so that we know that it's good to go for the customer and um, once we know it's good to go for the customer then we're, we're going to talk about what we're going to do with it if we're going to sell it again or if we're going to put it on payments again because it's going to it's hopefully going to be a good car still it's got the gps still on this thing and the uh, last customer paid off the gps with the payment she did make but we'll make i'll i'm gonna break down what i did make on this car so you know that and what I made on the other two cars. But this is it right here. She's definitely got to be vacuumed out, but it's a pretty decent looking car. Let me flip it around and show you the dash and what the miles and everything is. All right, so here's a look at the dash and everything. Not bad on the dash. Right there, our temperature is looking good right now. We've got, if it can zoom in on it, 207,909 miles on this car. It is a 03 Grand Am, and I mean, it's an 03 Grand Am with the 207,000 miles, almost 208,000 miles, but I mean, it's still a really decent car. It's not bad. It's not beat up. You get a little bit of rust on the outside of it, like most, uh, most cars are that I buy, so I mean, we got a pretty decent car here. It's been sold once, we got it again, we're going to sell it for a second time, and if we get it again, we'll sell it for a third time. But we're going to break down what we're going to do with this car, what we made on them at the end of the video. So let's see if it over tries to overheat or anything after a little while of driving, and then we'll be back. Alright, we made it back to the lot. She's perfect on the temperature. She's running really decent. The radio don't work on this thing, but everything else is going to be good on it. She's here at the lot beside the old Mustang that we got. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you go back to the video before this one and check that out. And then over there, the 13 Dodge Dart, make sure you check that video out if you haven't seen it. So she so she made it to the lot, so we got to go grab the vacuum from the house. We just bought a new um, shop vac from Walmart yesterday that was on sale. So, um, because if you've seen in the one video our vacuum messed up when we plugged it in, I've never seen that happen, but it was on the video for the Dodge Dart that I did. The, the thing completely messed up and I don't know what, what caused it, but we got a new shop vac now, so we gotta go back to the house and pick that up. We're gonna run in the dark to go get that and then we'll be back and we're gonna get this thing cleaned up. I'm not gonna show cleaning on video, so I'll go show you the vacuum the shop vac and then I'll explain what profit and everything we're going to make on these vehicles. I'm going to show you a quick walk around of the vehicle real fast so you got something to judge the price off of that I'm talking about. So here's a quick look at the vehicle.
there's a walk around in the vehicle. I pointed out that rust for you just so you know these aren't perfect vehicles. I can, I'm selling and you got, you know that um, you don't have to find something perfect to get the prices I'm telling you because these vehicles ain't perfect. The door squeaks on it. I can probably fix that. Radio doesn't work. Um, it's dirty, but I'm going to clean it so you're going to see the after, how it looks after this, after I clean it up and everything. And but you got your rust on the outside of it on the doors So you got different stuff the windows. I think all the windows work. Maybe this one right over here doesn't work um, Let me try real fast and see All right, let's see if that one works Okay, that does work Driver works That back one works. Let's try the other back one. See there you go that back one right there does not work. I knew one of them didn't work, but I'm not going to fix that. If it's not the driver window that doesn't roll down, I don't fix it. And sometimes I don't fix the driver window either. But so this is stuff that you know you can know, and you can go to the junkyard and you can fix that window for ten or fifteen bucks if you want to, as long as I got the same kind of vehicle there, so you can pull that window regulator out of there, and you can fix that cell with no problems. You can um, change out the radio in here for probably. 15 20 bucks from the junkyard, but I'm just not going to do that because uh, it's not It doesn't keep it from selling it. So last time it'll sell again. It's tax time If it wasn't tax time and it was kind of hard to sell stuff Then I would fix some of the problems maybe but not always Because I wasn't before tax time with all of them. I sold this before it was tax time and I still got it sold so that's some things to think about and Keep yourself from looking for perfect vehicles because you're just not going to find the perfect vehicles. They're not out there. And if they are out there, you're going to have to pay more for it and then you're going to have to sell for more. If you fix a bunch of stuff, you're going to have to sell for more. It's going to be harder to sell it. It's going to take longer to sell it. So I have to take all of that into in, in consideration. So that's just a look at the vehicle. So now we'll, we'll um, talk about the profits in a minute after we get that shop back. Back at the lot, and here's our vacuum that I bought yesterday. It's a, a heart vacuum, and it's pretty good. It's not too loud, but it's still a big vacuum. It can have a really long attachment for it, so you don't have to bend over so much, or you can take it off if you want. So, let's look at the vacuum. I just wanted to show you that, and we're gonna get this thing cleaned up. All right, here's a look at how it looks now. You've got it all clean inside of it. Let me get... The door doesn't squeak now. No more stuff in the seat or anything. Floorboards cleaned up. Alright, that's how this thing looks now that it's cleaned up. Comment down below and let me know how you, how you think it looks now. Tell me what you think you would sell this car for in the comments down below. Or what you would have paid for this car. Like I said, 03 Grand Dam, 209,000 miles. Tell me how you think I did on cleaning this thing. Now let's get to the house for the part you've been waiting on and let's talk money. Alright, we're back at the house here. Now let's talk money on these things. So we're gonna, let's start with the 03 Pontiac Grand Dam. This thing was the 2003 Grand Dam. We bought it from the auction originally for a winning bid of $350. There would normally been a $50 buy fee on this price, but I had won some credits from buying um, so many cars within the one month. And they were giving away credits if you went over. I think it was like five cars in one month. They was given two or three hundred dollars in in buy credits. So that the buy credits that I got from buying cars went toward it. It paid the fifty dollar buy fee. So I got the car for three hundred and fifty dollars, went and bid, nothing added to it, and then it cost me a hundred and fifty dollars to go pick that car up. That's um sixty dollars for a U-Haul and about a hundred dollars in gas. And it's, it can be $190, it, you never really know, it's about, most of them are about four hours away that I go pick up, so 
$150 and going and picking it up. So we've got 500 total into this vehicle. So we have 500 into this Grand Dam. We put it on the lot. We put a GPS in it. The GPSs that I have cost $80 each. So that was $80 for the GPS. We put that in there. So we had five into the car. We took, it was supposed to be 600 down on this car. And it really wasn't moving. And I had five in it. So I said, okay, I'll go ahead and just change it to 500 down. And I'll get this thing out the door and get somebody making payments on it so that I've got money coming in instead of a car just sitting on the car lot. Because when you're buying these cheaper cars, they can take a they can take one to two weeks and stuff to sell them. Um, I usually sell in a week, but sometimes they do take two weeks. Sometimes they could take three weeks, just depending on what kind of vehicle it is. Because cheap cars, there's good cheap cars and there's slow cheap cars that sell them. So we have five into it. We had 500 down on the ad for the vehicle, and a woman came in. She had she wanted the vehicle. She test drove it and everything. She looked at it, and she liked the vehicle, so she decided that she wanted to get it. And then she tells me she's got $300 with her, and I said I can't, I can't let you have this vehicle for 300 down. You have to go to an ATM or something and get more money because I can't take that. So she comes back and she only she only brings another hundred dollars and says she's got four hundred and that's all she can get. And I didn't want to lose a sale on it and I don't suggest you do this if you can't afford to be waiting on money and stuff like that. But I went ahead, I said I'll take your four hundred down today and then um I added some money to the overall price because of it because of me not getting the full down payment. So I told her I the we financed this car out to out to nineteen hundred dollars and I originally told her that it was gonna be seventeen hundred and I said, Well since you only got four down instead of seventeen hundred dollars total on this car, it's gonna be nineteen hundred because of not having the full down payment. So she was fine with that. She didn't even care. She was. She just wanted the car. So I took the 400 down on the vehicle. And she drove off. Everything was good. And then um, she came back the first, the first. I do my payments every other week instead of once a month. I suggest you do the same every other week. And do not do once a month because it's too long to be waiting on your money. So after two weeks she came back. She paid her payment. Uh, my payments are $130 every other week. I think I said that earlier, but that's what all my customers are paying right now until I do decide to and to raise it up higher. And um, so she made her first $130 payment. She came back second time. She made her second payment, $130 payment. And each time was no problem at all. She came in and made the payment. And third payment, no show. We did have a lot of bad weather though, so I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, bring it, bring it to me next week, whenever, whenever the roads and everything are clear. It's fine, I understand. And but next week she did, she, she was no show. She didn't bring her payment. I sent her another message. I said, I had to have your payment. Your next payment is is next Friday already, and you haven't made the last payment yet. And you're fixing to be to the next payment. So she um she said she was she said she couldn't she didn't have the money she used it she and she couldn't make the payment I, and she asked if she could make the payment on the next one and pay the both payments on that payment. So I said that's fine. You can pay it on next Friday and you gotta pay both payments. It's past due and. And nothing less than both payments. And she said that that was fine and she would do that. But then the next, that coming Friday, she she never showed up. I sent her a message. She said she was trying to get the money. And then she just quit. Then she just quit replying back to me. So I showed up two days later after that day. And I repoed the vehicle. So we repoed the vehicle. She was two payments behind. She made two payments. 
and we had made a total of four down, $260 for the two payments made. That's a total of $660 that she paid on the card to me. I had 500 into it, so that makes me $160 of profit on the car. So I made $160, and I repoed the vehicle back, and I have it to sell for a second time again. So I made, I've got $160 profit, and then I, I just had it fixed. You see me pick it up from the mechanic, so that was $30 to fix that. To fix the antifreeze leak on it that it was having, it ended up being a um, a con a connector piece that that goes into the intercooler and the transmission line. So that was leaking. That was letting all of it leak out because that connection was rusted, is what it was. So they fixed that, and so that was thirty dollars. Um, I get I paid my brother forty dollars for um, going with me to repo the vehicle. So. That was $70 I just spent again on the car with, after getting it back. So that brings me down to $90 profit on this vehicle. And then I, and now I get to sell it a second time. So I made $90 on the car after getting it back, um, paying somebody to help me repo it, getting it fixed and getting it ready for sale again. So now everything's fixed on it. It's ready for sale. I don't have to do anything else to this car but wash it tomorrow. And I've already made $90 on it without even selling it. So, I will be, when I sell this car, it'll be completely profit. And the GPS is still in there from the last time. So, if I, if I decide to make take payments on this thing, I could do $600 down on it. And the hold down payment will be profit and all the payments will be profit. And then, who knows, I might, I might have to repo it a second time. And I'm fine with that. So either that or I'll sell it for fifteen hundred dollars cash and it'll be whole the whole fifteen hundred dollars will be profit and I'll go buy two more cars with it. So comment down below, let me know if you would finance this car or if you would if you would finance this car, take payments again and have to repo it a second time, maybe, or maybe you get the whole eighteen nineteen hundred dollars this time when you finance it or if you would go ahead and cash sell this thing get rid of it and get more cars and why you would do that so comment um cash sell or buy your pay here payments in the description in the comments down below and let me know what you would do all right now the other two the other two video, the other two cars was an 08 Caliber, and then the other one was a 99 Ford Escort. These videos, I mean not videos, but these cars were in my um, car lot tour video, so that's where you can see these cars if you did not see them on video. And um, I have actually another video on the Ford Escort when I first bought it too. Yeah, it was called a $50 flip car on the channel, so you'll see it in the thumbnail. It's a brown car with a little fader on the back of it, and there's a trash can by the bumper on the on the thumbnail of the video. So that's where you can see that car if you haven't seen it before. But this video is getting really, really long, so I'm going to cut it off here, and we'll talk about them videos later on.